there you go the recording for in case those people that aren't able to join live or uh, if you want to watch this back um, because you might learn some stuff that'll be beneficial for you that you just want to remember a few things or uh, go through some of the um, exercises again my name is Jacko David Jackson um, I am a master instructor with the Oxford Advantage as well as working with clients and teaching people I do a lot of work within the sports performance world as well as working with clients uh, suffering with like stress and anxiety that type of thing uh, and so, some of that type of stress management work in the in the corporate world as well um, and as a master instructor I will as well as doing that I will uh, teach the certification as well so people can become certified in the Oxford Vantage um, through me teaching uh, the certification as well as one of the things I love doing, I love working with um, other, with other coaches and and the, and the mentoring program that goes with some of that stuff as well. So, um, to the the recording is going to allow people to watch back at any time. The session is on functional breathing. We'll be looking a lot around like the mechanics of functional breathing, what that is, and what that means and importantly we're going to feel it <laughs> i'm going to give you the chance to feel it on the inside and i also want you to have the chance to feel it on the outside so you can start to connect those two things um, together as with anything in life not just breathing um how uh, how you make changes has got to start with awareness so you need to have some awareness before uh before we actually are able to um make those changes or, or put in place the, the the things that you're going to learn so we're going to do um some practical work in that i'm going to show you a little i've got a few slides that i'll show you uh, just so you can understand like um what it look what, what our body looks like on the inside um when we're trying to get these ribs and things to move i'll give us um, a little bit of an idea on that and then i um i'll um let, take us through some of the exercises so that you can actually like implement these into some of your daily practices um one of the things i wanted to say but the right at the start was that this is always an exciting topic or session for me when talking about functional breathing and, and, and breathing mechanics because i think it's the most important aspect of breathing or breath work and when we talk about breath work we've almost got like these two angles um to it almost now or, or i sort of see in my mind of like you've got breath work meaning um using it as a tool to you know create other changes within the body and sort of like the wim hof style breathing like trauma release and that type of stuff and then we've got breath work that's focused on learning and understanding how to breathe what function of breathing is how we can use those to um create changes within the body so it's almost like rather than understanding like how to breathe is different to using breathing as breathing as a tool and i get excited about the functional breathing because it's how to breathe that you can use in any other breathing practice that you might do or in anything that you do in life there's no one that benefits from like breathing more dysfunctionally than they do breathing with good functional breathing um, so it's one of the things that can be an undertone to anything else that you're going to do so I'm like, I get excited by that because I know that you can all, and we can all use it um, in anything and everything that we do. And we're always breathing. So we can always potentially um, utilize it a little bit better. That sound all right? I'm gonna share my screen. Um, um, here we go. Um, let's move this down. Mm -mm -mm. so functional breathing one of the things that i like uh, a phrase that i like to to hold on to is like unlocking the power of the breath like it's there already you're always doing it uh, and hopefully you'll notice some changes and in, in you'll in your feel a little bit of that um, as we go through some of the uh, exercises this is just to like set the tone for some for us to understand what it is um, that we're going to be trying um, to do so I believe, and this is one of the things that are phrases that I use with um, Pro Breathwork, which is my new um, app where we're talking about changing the way that we breathe to improve the way we think, feel, move, and perform. It can literally, will affect your cognitive processing because it will affect your nervous system and it will affect oxygen supply 
to your brain. It will change the way that you feel because again, it will really linking into our nervous system, which will impact on your things like your stress response um, and then how you move because where your um, where your breathing, your ribs, your diaphragm, they are linked into things like spinal stability, your diaphragms connect into things like your hip flexors, like psoas major, and your rib cage positioning will affect how your shoulder functions because your scapula rides on your shoulder. So it affects all different things up and down the chain and then how you perform as well. Like if you're better, more efficient with your breathing, you can then have better output for any of your physical um, exercises that you're going to do or perform or challenges or things that you're going to do. I'm running a 135 mile or trying to run 135 mile ultra marathon around Anglesey in North Wales here in the UK in September and one of the things that I'm backing myself on because I've never done it before is the efficiency angle of the nasal breathing for example that allows us to recover a little bit faster a little bit better uh, a little quicker and also deliver oxygen more efficiently at low level aerobic work that I'm going to be doing I'm not going to be going fast <laughs> for 135 miles it's going to be slow um, but yeah there's the performance from a, a, a sport and exercise perspective but there's also just like your performance in your everyday life and, and routines as well okay um so what is functional breathing some of the things that functional breathing is gonna in itself that we're going to look at is going to impact on like your biomechanics and that's like how your rib cage is moving and, and linking in with your diaphragm that's going to impact into the biochemistry so that's sort of more to do with like the speed and cadence at which we're breathing and how sensitive we are to carbon dioxide uh, carbon dioxide being one of not the only but, but the my the main driver of uh, our breathing the chemoreceptors in the brainstem are monitoring levels of carbon dioxide rising because the effect that has on the pH of the blood effectively makes your blood um, more acidic. That's one of the main drivers um, of the of our breathing cycles, which the medulla, so part of the brainstem, is um, dictating the speed and size of the breaths that we take. Those two things are going to be interlinked, like your stimulus to breathe and how your body is trying to manage oxygen and carbon dioxide is going to dictate the size of the breaths and the speed at which you're going to breathe at, and that will impact on how well you can breathe biomechanically. So the two and, and vice versa, the two are going to feed each other. So that's something to, to think about. Um, functional breathing will have, have an effect on the nervous system, heart rate variability, your digestion and, and your stress. So a lot of that comes down to like the, the diaphragmatic breathing, um, will be massaging, a little internal massage for your stomach and those internal organs. Your vagus nerve runs all the way through the wandering nerve, a, a cranial nerve X, um, as my friend Dr. Perry Nicholson um, describes it, so the 10th cranial nerve. Um, he's over in the States here, I have to say like that. But um, the wandering nerve goes and visits all of your um, internal organs. And interestingly, I think about 80% of the information is being sent back up to the brain rather than like the top down from the brain. And the, 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 your diaphragmatic breathing helps to innovate and activate the vagus nerve having good vagal tone so that tone to that vagus nerve is important for the nervous system for your heart rate variability your digestion and your stress so we get that by we get that with these functional breathing mechanics that we're going to teach which is primarily around rib cage and diaphragmatic movement when we're um breathing with the diaphragm also creating a lot more inter-abdominal pressure is what a phrase that people hear people say well that creating more spinal stability, which will help improve um, our functional movements. More stable spine will help the brain be happy with um, allowing for more greater ranges of motion, or other like more distal joints or joints from and body parts further away from that midline because we're having that stability through that midline. The functional breathing will also affect like the size of the breath that you can take when you can breathe deeper and also expand the rib cage larger, we're able to take a a bigger breath will help with oxygen delivery um, and our exercise performance. So um, it's it's multifaceted in this, and ultimately, like your functional breathing will impact everything that you're going to potentially go and do. And so it's an important one for me that, as a, as a base level and basic level, we understand the fundamentals of it. And when we do, then it's going to create a nice foundation upon which you can go and do other stuff. Um, with it as well whatever it is that you want to do but you're always breathing it's always happening in the background you're breathing potentially about 20 to 24 thousand times a day I think of every one of those as like a rep there's an energy cost to breathing if we can be more efficient with our breathing we're able to be calmer 
because we're able to actually like do less of it. The thing that you need to do to be alive, we're able to do less of that. That is less strain, less stress on the system, more energy, more uh, capacity to go and do more exciting and life-changing things than just breathing. <laughs> Hopefully breathing isn't like the best thing we ever do in our life, even though it might be the most important. And just because it's automatic doesn't mean it's optimal. That's something to remember. Don't fall into the, the trap of thinking because it's automatic. It's automatic because it's so important. Yeah, it's so important. The brain has to have it on autopilot. So when you're not thinking about it, it's going to carry on happening. Otherwise, you're going to die. So that's why it has why it's automatic. But the brain will also go for the path of least resistance. Yeah. What is um, what is the I'm just going to quiet for a second. What is the path? I can be a bit bigger. Talk, what is the path of least resistance? Like for breathing, you know, you've got a couple of options to, and this affects the efficiency of our breathing and why the functional breathing is really important. We've got a couple of options with our, with our breathing. You can't breathe, you've got how many holes in your face have you got or in your head do you've got to get air in? You can't suck air in through your arse, I don't know, someone probably can. Um, but <laughs> generally breathing is going to happen up here somewhere. You can't, you don't breathe with the ears, you don't breathe with the eyes, like you've either got that, uh, that massive hole in the middle of your face or those two little fellas ladies if you female you, you know what i mean um the path of least resistance is that the mouth wider airway less resistance less resistance means easier so the brain finds it easy to do that because there's little resistance to it but what does what does little resistance result in or mean well if there's less resistance it's able to happen faster if we're breathing faster, that's actually a sign of inefficiency. The less breaths you need to take is a sign that you're being more efficient with each breath. Does that make sense? Does anyone give me some, some thumbs up? Yeah. Um, and then if it's fast, I'm going to stand up for a second. <laughs> with, my, with, my, with my diaphragmatic breathing in here, if it's fast, <laughs> like, am I going to breathe like that? Like, I have to work, I have to practice of working hard to like be able to demonstrate that in that it's really hard to breathe fast into the diaphragm because it being hard the body doesn't want it or the brain doesn't want to do it the path of least resistance is more <laughs> and that feels easier to do it's not efficient but it feels easier okay and so functional breathing is more about utilizing um the ribs and the diaphragm to draw air into the lower portion of the lungs where there's the greatest uh, amount of blood because blood sits low down within the lungs um, due to gravity. And then um, the, uh, we have the greatest density of alveoli in the bottom portions of the lungs. That's where the transfer of oxygen um, into the bloodstream is gonna take place. Our slower breath, that diaphragmatic breathing is gonna allow us to do or help us or encouraging us to do rather than fast. We're gonna lose less air in dead space. That's just space within the lungs that can't be occupied. It's about 150 mil per person, depending on the size of the person, but per breath that someone takes. So if we can uh, take less breaths, we can be more efficient. It also helps with the oxygen delivery because slower breathing allows carbon dioxide to build up, which is, I mean, it's a whole, there's a whole another section to talk about that on sort of the science of breathing. We can just, Trust us in like the, the science is there to say that CO2 helps with oxygen delivery, helps, it's the catalyst allows oxygen to be released from red blood cells. Um, but then the other thing being that if I'm able to switch from that big gaping hole in the face to the two little ones, there's more resistance, which helps slow down the breath, which then also makes it sort of feel like, oh, is that, is that good? Well, yeah, we just said that, if we're breathing, if we're breathing a bit slower, we're like wasting less air in dead space. And a slower breath is a sign that we're being more efficient. And also this time is important for the diaphragmatic breathing. If it's quick, <laughs> like I demonstrated, it's hard. <laughs> it's too hard. The brain doesn't want to do that. So when it's a bit slower and the resistance gives the diaphragm something to pull against. But and importantly, the time for the ribs and the diaphragm to move effectively. Okay. But then that speed is being driven, remember, by CO2 buildup. 
which were mentioned at the start. So this, the, the, how sensitive we are to carbon dioxide is linked into the biochemistry. So depending on how sensitive you are to carbon dioxide will affect how slow you can breathe, which will affect how well you can breathe um, functionally with your diaphragm and your, and your ribs. Okay, that might all sound a bit complicated. The reality is we're going to get into the practice. It's going to be like nice and super, super simple to get your head around. Okay, all I want you to do is appreciate that, like why it's more efficient and also how it's not just, we can't just think of the, 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 the breathing mechanics in isolation. We have to have an appreciation of what's driving our breathing and our sensitivity to CO2 buildup is part of that. Yeah, um, I've got other uh, videos and, and things if you want to delve into that in a bit deeper. Yeah, um, but just whatever I just need, I have to mention, I can't just jump straight into the stuff without mentioning that because it's not setting you up for success with your understanding. And your understanding is key to implementing stuff correctly. OK, so practically <laughs> we can try and do these things. We're going to breathe with the nose. We're going to breathe with the diaphragm. We're going to breathe with the ribs and we're going to breathe with your tongue. And you're like, hold on a minute. That made sense to you. That's that last bit. Um, yes, and that's slightly a joke, but um, we're not going to breathe with your tongue. Um, but the tongue, the ribs and the diaphragm, the nose are all four key important areas to diaphragmatic breathing. OK, so without me or functional breathing without me giving you more detail about the tongue the ribs and the diaphragm you might be not able to do it but you can from now try to breathe with the nose so having the mouth closed like shut your mouth <laughs> mouth closed breathe in and out through the nose and can you try and breathe quietly through your nose if you breathe quietly it has to be slowly if you're breathing through the nose and slowly you've got a better chance of setting yourself up for success, creating better conditions for your body to be able to utilize that diaphragm and that rib cage expansion. The tongue bit will, will add on um, as we go through, okay? Um, it's tongue position to help with the airway, okay? Um, but I wanted to show you a couple of little images from the inside. It's difficult, we don't see ourselves. Like you never see your insides. Hopefully, <laughs> cranky, hopefully you don't see your insides. Um, right, this is looking at the back of the dude. Yeah, or the guy, the guy, I think it's a guy. Um, it's an animation, so it's not perfect, but some things that we can look at and will be of interest. This is your diaphragm. That's what it looks like on an animation. Your one might not look exactly the same as that. It's gonna be something like that. It is a dome shape and tracks the line of the ribs. We'll show you, see that when, the, when we come to the front, but looking at the back, we can see that like, it's not symmetrical. And I know we look symmetrical, on the outside, <laughs> but we're not symmetrical on the inside. You know, our, 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 um, our, because of where the heart sits, our lung on the left and diaphragm on the left-hand side doesn't have quite the same space and is slightly smaller. We see a smaller attachment on that left-hand side of the diaphragm to the spine. The one on the right is a little bit bigger and has a thicker, longer attachment onto the right. So sometimes it can be a lot easier for people when they tune in to feel like they can expand the right side when we go through some of these mechanics a little bit easier or a little bit better. And we can, that's not to say we want to try and breathe like symmetrically, let's say, um, or evenly, but with an appreciation of like, it's not going to feel potentially, oh, it's okay, let's put it a different way. It's okay for it not to feel perfectly exactly the same on either side because it's not exactly the same on either side. On the inside okay i'll just let that play around to the front and then i'll try to pause him on the front part there um so then we see this like domed shape that's tracking the line of your ribs we'll have a dig around and feel that in a second okay but just to give you a little bit of an idea of where where it is that's sort of where it is within the body yeah um and the shape of it and that there are some differences from either side. This is then, this is an animation again, clearly. So it's not perfect, okay? But it gives you a little bit of an idea of what's going on. When we are, that's exhaling. And then this is inhaling. We've got the expansion out and the diaphragm moving down and the ribs moving out. I'll play again. So the inhaling is the expanding outwardly to draw air in. The exhaling is the ribs coming back together and the diaphragm going back up that rib cage, okay? So that's like one simple bit of, uh, that some people get a bit mixed up. The notion of breathing in can sometimes feel like to breathe in is to like suck my belly in. 
that's like that's not breathing in as an in inhalation inhalation is air coming in in order for air to come in you must expand on the inside you can expand on the inside by lifting your rib cage and breathing into the upper chest but that stops us from being able to breathe into the lower portion so what we want to do is you want to expand the rib cage by the lower portion of the ribs moving out and the diaphragm moving down increases the space within that thorax that decreases pressure that's what draws and pulls air in Okay, now the last little bit I want to show you on this is I want you to look on this. Can you see my cursor down on let's I'm going to say let's not be mean, but let's just let's be honest. Let's call let's call this the love handle. <laughs> so which is not on where his rib cage is. It's not on where the diaphragm is, but it's it's lower down. Yeah. Just have a look at this portion. OK, so the breathing, even though there's not we're looking like more like belly button uh, stomach area. The lungs and the diaphragm are not down there, but we're seeing movement because of it pushing lower down. So we can feel and notice movement lower down than where the ribs are and where the diaphragm is because of the movement on the inside that's happening. So we'll have a feel of that when we go through some of the practical um, stuff now. OK, so um, for this, we're going to go to standing. If you have your the other thing is if you have your video on and I can see it, I can try and give you a little few like little bits of tips and that and also know that I'm not the only one that's um, just standing here being a bit weird doing all this breathing stuff okay so four things anyone remember them it's not a test hopefully I can I'm teaching it nose diaphragm ribs tongue and not in that order <laughs> it doesn't have to be in that order because we're actually going to go we've talked about nose already we're going to breathe in that through the nose um, tongue Tongue position. I want you before you change your tongue position. I want you to just just stood up, relax. Like I like to shake the shoulders to be relaxed. Just like shake that. Okay, nice and relaxed. Just take a couple of breaths in and out. Okay, just notice. It can be a little bit harder standing up as well. Sometimes some people it might be easier lying down. But what's important is to practice any of these breathing techniques and drills in any position and posture that you're going to find yourself in particularly if you do like different sports if you find say like a um my sister used to do what and she was she was world champion um rafting white water rafting whether it be like in a kneeling lunge position it's like be good at, be good at breathing when you're doing that like as an example but for most of us lying down is potentially the easiest but what's most applicable and some of you may never watch another breathing session ever again and i'm like how do I want to teach you if you're never going to do something ever again? I'm going to teach you standing up, upright, because most of your life is going to happen like that. Yeah, upright or sitting, or, but certainly upright. Yeah, sitting or standing. So um, do practice in lots of different positions. We'll do all these um, standing. Taking a couple breaths in and out through the nose. Just notice how you feel. And then also what's moving to, in order for air to come in and out. We, we mentioned that the thorax we have to we have to expand so what feels to you like it's moving can you feel your cheeks maybe do you you're you sucking the air in can you feel your shoulders like can you feel your neck or your chest or do you feel like you your, your boobies <laughs> or your, your your ribs or your tummy or your sides or your back like where do you feel moving Okay, that's step, that's number one. Okay, where can you feel moving? Now, to help us with a bit of awareness of that, I want you to put one hand on your chest and one hand below where your two, let me find my two lower ribs, showing you, yeah, there they are. Where there's two lower ribs meet, that's called the infrasternal angle, where it meets with your breastplate, your sternum. Where those ribs meet, I want you to place your hand just below there. Okay, another one on the upper chest. And then again, mouth closed, in and out through the nose. Just take a few breaths and just notice which hand is moving more. Very, very simple awareness drill. Really good though. It's the type of, it's so simple. I used to think that this was like rubbish. I was like, oh, that's too easy. Why would I do that? But actually it's really good to be able to just hone it. Okay. And then what I want you to do is like, just like notice, like roll your shoulders a bit, like notice, ah. Like, oh, are they tense without me realizing like shrug them up a bit roll them like try to relax 
And can you get that bottom hand to be the one that's moving more? Okay, and we're gonna build on that. So just by thinking about it, you might be able to make that, if anyone just use the chat box list for feedback, if you, or just thumbs up, like just by thinking about it and like sort of relaxing rolling shoulders, like just by being aware and thinking, can I make that bottom hand move more? Sometimes for people just having a few minutes just to think about it and relax the shoulders, even that can make a bit of a difference, okay? Relax the arms back down, because you can't spend your whole life like this. <laughs> Everyone will be like, what's with you? <clears throat> what's up with you? Be like, <clears throat> oh, I don't know, I need to come. <laughs> if you walk around your whole life like this, like, you're pretty limited with things that you can do. So, have you relax your hands down, can you still feel that bottom portion is moving rather than the top? If you can see yourself on the screen, when, you, when you're breathing, or like I like to do this in front of the mirror for people, like when you're breathing, are you like, yeah, it's all down here. And then I look at you and you're like, <laughs> it's like there's a disconnect between what's actually happening, what you think is feeling is happening. So seeing yourself can be good feedback for that, okay? So that's just our starting point for lower awareness. Okay, and we're gonna build then nicely on top of that. Um, tongue position, you're gonna make this noise. No, 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 I'm not, Jacko, that sounds silly. Yes, you are. No, 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 make the no noise, yeah? And where you put the tongue for that at the front, that's where the tip of your tongue is gonna go. But then the rest of the tongue, I want you to try and get flat to the top of the palate. Try and like get it up there, okay? Now, depending on your jaw, your face, how high your palate is, I've got a really bad palate in airway, like, so, you know, Crimea River. Um, but depending on how good your teeth are and how wide your palate is, like, that's going to be either easier or harder. And there's tongue specialists that help us work on, like, the strength of our tongue to help this. But very simply, putting the tip of the tongue na, 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 to that end position, na, and then the rest of the tongue pulled up to the top of the palate. Then close the mouth gently. And just take a couple of breaths in and out through the nose with that tongue position. Try to have a nice long spine, but not rigid. Because <laughs> rigid military posture will restrict your breathing. <laughs> when you tense here, you're gonna tense and stop the ribs from moving. So long spine, like head towards the ceiling, but relaxed. Relax through the shoulders, like to shake, like if you want to have a check, you with your relax or not to shake things out. Okay, and then tongue position, N, no, 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 flat to the palate, to the top. Does that airflow feel a little bit freer, a little bit easier, just by changing the tongue position? Okay, that can be a bit of a game changer for some people. For others, you might naturally have your tongue in quite a good position, and therefore it doesn't make that much difference for you. And that's also a good thing, because you're doing some good stuff around it, okay? All right, so in and out through the nose, tongue to the roof of the mouth, behind the front teeth. There's our two things. Next, we then need to work on diaphragm and ribs. And this is the more exciting part. To, well, I like it, okay? So we can get into a little bit of some like, different stuff with this, okay? But everything you're going to do is going to be in and out through the nose, and it's going to be with your tongue position to the roof of the, roof of the palate, yeah? Top of the mouth. Okay, so... Let's look at the diaphragm first. Your diaphragm, where we saw in the pictures, yeah? This is my uh, right side, the camera's probably mirroring. This is my right side, this is my left. So I've got an appreciation of the diaphragm. It's got these two hemispheres. It's on like a dome shape, yeah? Where those ribs are, it's attaching on the front along that dome, yeah? And then it's attaching into the spine. At the back we saw, I've got a longer attachment on the right compared to the left, but, um, <laughs> When we're teaching and when you're watching someone teach you about breathing, we don't turn around and just talk to you like this all the time, even though a vast majority of my breathing is going to be into the back. So I want I always say this to people just so we're aware, like I'm going to talk, show you front on and talk front on. But we're not just in this frontal plane. Yeah, we need to be expanding all the way around. OK, but you're going to take your fingers and equate yourself with your ribs, which are at the front going to be where your diaphragm attaches sort of underneath. So gently, relax your tummy. If you tense your, just, this is quite good. If you tense your stomach muscles, your diaphragm, uh, sorry, your diaphragm, your ribs, it's like you can't get under your ribs because exhaling 
is where ribs coming down and in, and that when you do active exhalation, everyone do an active exhalation now. So breathe out strongly through your mouth, just as an active exhalation with your hands on your stomach. It's like, oh yeah, my abs tense. They're under there somewhere, <laughs> yeah. But my obliques, they're pulling the ribs down and in. When you exhale, you can't get your fingers underneath your rib cage. But uh, if I relax my stomach muscle, which must be important for inhalation, because we just did exhalation with the tensor. So it's important. Relax your stomach muscles. And then actually, can I get my fingers to just have a little bit of a prod around? And don't be, get, some people get weird, like, oh, it's a bit weird. Like, it's your ribs, it's your body, it's not mine, don't worry. It's not the person next to you. So fingers underneath there, just have a little bit of a prod and feel, and just try to get a little bit of a sensation touch underneath the ribs at the front. Right in the center, you'll struggle because like your rectus abdominis will be coming down, so there's too much tissue there, but just to the edges, to the sides, you can track all the way down to the bottom. And it can be quite tender for some, it's tender for some people when the diaphragm's a bit stuck down and a bit knotted, yeah? Because the diaphragm is like any muscle tissue. If it's functioning well and moving through a nice range of motion, then it will be nice to touch. If it's all tight and knotted up and not working well, then it's gonna be a bit sensitive. Now, just relax your arms down. Just the fact that you've prodded in there, just take a breath in now and be aware of that portion sort of like coming down, expanding out. And just by having touched there with your fingers, you'll be like, oh yeah, I can feel like, I can just feel that like expansion down here more. Okay. So it's going to get me, don't worry. If you don't feel it yet, it's going to get better, don't worry. Now, that's just like a little bit of sensory touch onto it and just getting acquainted where it is, trying to go, okay, that was my body. I saw the animation of the guy. It's like this. And as I breathe in, it comes down, flattens out and helps push those ribs out. And the ribs are moving as well to expand that, what we call infrasternal angle, the angle the ribs make with the, the stern and the breastplate. Okay? Um, but to feel, that's very much on the outside. I said I was going to have you feel it on the inside. So if I said tense your diaphragm, diaphragm contracting or tensing is an inhalation. Yeah? But if I said to you, right, tense, everyone tense the diaphragm now as strong as they can, we'd probably just tense our abs because it's in there somewhere. I don't know how to connect to it. Whereas we just did, forceful exhalation is tense in the abs. So forceful exhalation can't also be the diaphragm because the diaphragm contracting is inhalation, opening up, expanding, okay? Now, like we can tense our bicep, everyone tense the bicep, <clears throat> squeeze. You know, you know what it feels like to tense your bicep. You know how to send a neuron to that muscle. Our proprioception of that area is, is good. Proprioception of the trunk, typically for everyone is like, it's just poor, it's difficult. We don't have that awareness as just human beings. But on the inside is then even more difficult. We can't even see it. But we can make ourselves feel the diaphragm contracting by um, doing an isometric contraction. So your bicep, like tense, that's an isometric, like shortened position, just uh, no movement, <clears throat> isometric, stationary. We can do the same by holding the breath and trying to breathe in. We call it a blocked inhalation, okay? So if I were to put my one hand just to guide me where my diaphragm is, because I don't want to do it from up here, one hand to guide me underneath where those ribs meet. I do a normal breath in and out, and then pinch the nose, and then try to breathe in. Can you see that? Whilst I hold my breath, I try to breathe in. And it's like, boom. <laughs> it tries, don't hold your breath for ages, just, Try one or two and then like relax, breathe in. It's not, we're not trying to challenge our breath holding in this. But can you feel a like, oh, that was strong. I could feel something in there. It's like, feels like my abs, but it's not my abs. I can feel it's like more in the inside. Okay. We're going to try one more where I want you to try and make it strong as Imagine like when you tense that as much as you can, it's like tense it as hard. Same thing here. So hand just below where the ribs are meeting, normal in, normal out. Try and make it strong. Oh, I really feel, yeah, I can feel it. It's trying to pull and tug to down to get air to come in, but I'm trapping the air by holding my breath, stopping the air coming in. That makes sense? We can feel it down in there, yeah? Can we feel that? I'm just gonna put some people here, yeah? 
that's your diaphragm contracting. Now, when you're doing your normal breathing, it doesn't contract as strongly as that, okay? But with an awareness of that now, of that area, we prodded it, we felt it contract strongly on the inside. Can you, with your tongue in that good position, breathing in and out through the nose, can you make, can you create that similar sensation of that diaphragm contraction down here, but just let the air come in through the nose? Slow and quietly. Yeah, to allow us to feel this breathing, these movements, we're probably going to take some larger breaths to, to accentuate them so we can feel it. Okay, but I don't want us to be over breathing. So we want to keep them quiet. So they're going to stay slow. Okay. Then I want us to just hone in on. So that's just like feeling the diaphragm. Let's hone in on the actual ribs then to be able to feel those ribs and get those ribs moving a little bit more. Okay. And what we're going to do for this is and get a little bit more awareness to this area. As I said, typically our proprioception of the trunk area is poor just for all human beings for whatever reason. OK, so and like, you know, like your back, like you have no idea like what's going on at your back and like your ribs, you know, the, your rib bone connects into the backbone, like your, your ribs connect into your spine at the back, your diaphragm, as well as connecting, uh, attaching here, attaches to the back and the spine, or well, the front portion of the spine, but at your back. And um, we just don't really think or know, like, what the hell's going on back there? Like, we don't think about it. We don't feel it. And a lot of the time, if we're in a lot of extension, so if you, if you find yourself in like quite an arch position, anterior pelvic tilt, or just any sort of like extension pattern that a lot of the time we see people in, the ribs are open at the front, which means we find it hard to exhale and get the ribs down, but we're also compressing the ribs at the back. So we're just compromising, being able to breathe effectively into all portions, and then we're restricting ourselves to only really be able to breathe into the front and then even still if the ribs aren't moving we'll just go then lead ourselves into that path of least resistance of lifting the upper chest which ends up being faster which ends up meaning we're wanting to then go back to that mouth breathing okay so um let's get acquainted with the with the ribs a little bit first thing is going to be touch one of the simplest things sensory we have so many sensory receptors in the skin just by touching you can heighten your proprioception of the area so where those lower ribs are, rather than digging in with the fingers, we're just going to rub the outside. Rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it. <laughs> yeah, rub the outside. Where those on the angle that they make, that infrasternal angle. Okay. Then also into the sides. These ribs go all the way around onto the sides. Rub, 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 rub. And then into the back. Rub, 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 rub. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then do a few all the way around. Nice rings. <laughs> do a few more of those. Don't do this bit. Don't do this bit. Now, if I rub my head and let go, I can feel where I was rubbing the skin on my head. <laughs> yeah. So where you are rubbing, relax your arms down, shake the shoulders. You can feel where you're rubbing. The skin should be like buzzing. OK. Now, tongue to the roof of the mouth, in that through the nose, feel the diaphragm contract, but feel that expansion, that area you were just rubbing, feel it expand out in all directions as you breathe in. Gently and quietly, but feel it expand out. Quiet on the way back in. The ribs are going to come. Just notice how the ribs come back together nicely. You can feel the movement like a band three-dimensionally around you. And just by rubbing, you're heightening your awareness of that area. Okay? And then take our hands. We're going to place them on the sides of the lower portions of those ribs. And then I want you to just gently push in with the hands. OK, uh, gently push in with the hands, not like too hard, just a couple of percent. <laughs> but you're going to then feel like you can push. You've got something sorry, to push against. So in that inhale. Now, rather than just feeling it move out, I'm going to actually see, can I move my hands out? So if I inhale now. Can I expand those ribs and widen? And then when I exhale, they come back together. So just try a couple of reps of that. So you've now got some external feedback and a little bit of pressure to feel, can you move the ribs out? When you breathe in and when you exhale, can the ribs come back together? Okay. 
Whilst you're doing that, if you feel your shoulders like shrug up and getting involved, just think about pushing your elbows down slightly. So if my shoulders up, if I push my elbow down, the idea of pushing the elbow down, just ever so gently, like 1% effort, push the elbows down, just inhibits those upper traps and helps you keep the shoulders down and relax. So elbows just down slightly, push in gently with the hands and then push those hands out with your breath. Then when you exhale, let them come back together. Do a couple more of those. The ribs moving out when you breathe in, you push your hands with your ribs, with the breath. When you exhale, they come back together. Nice. Then the one thing I want to just connect in together whilst we're doing that is the fact that when we put the hands on the outside, we definitely focus on pushing the ribs out. And when we push the ribs out, I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and visually show you. When I push the, if I show, so front on, I push the ribs out. Yeah, you can see my hands have widened. But if I, if you look at what happens here, if I, I'm going to now side on, push the ribs out. See how my tummy came in? So like I can get a bad habit of like pushing the ribs out, but suck my tummy in. Whereas I want that expansion of the diaphragm going down and pushing out. So I want there to be ribs out. So ribs being pushed out. But I also want to feel that diaphragm coming down and my expansion happening here. So I'm expanding. I know I'm expanding out to the sides because I can feel my hands moving. Yeah, but I also want to make sure I'm still getting that expansion. I'm not sucking that belly in. Some of us will do that as a bad habit, okay? So just think about that. I'm going, connecting this all together now. Like relatively like long posture, but just not rigid, because that'll stop you from, from breathing well, stop the wrist moves. So don't be rigid, but long posture, tongue to the roof of the mouth, in and out through the nose quietly. I push the ribs out with my breath in, my inhale, but I'm letting that expansion happen out through the diaphragm coming down and flattening out as well. And our exhalation is just going to be pretty passive in this. Let the ribs come back and down together. Like if I show you side on those two bad ones, if I show you a bad one, so pushing the ribs out, but sucking the belly in, looks like that, whereas pushing the ribs out and also expanding into here. So I want ribs out to show me I'm getting that lateral expansion. Feeling the diaphragm moving down, the, the movement coming, like I'll show that diaphragm. My, my ribs and, 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 stum, uh, and, and lungs aren't down here, but the diaphragm moving down and flattening out, I feel that expansion coming there rather than me uh, pulling it in, doing the opposite of what the diaphragm was. So if I'm sucking the tummy in, I'm restricting the diaphragm being, from being able to move down. Yeah. And then, so there's a couple of questions in the chat, I might answer those. Um, Yes, um, drills for breathe, this is a great one. So um, question from Luke, yeah? So he's gone, um, the, uh, feel, I can feel expanding into the sides, yeah? And then I can feel the, the front, but what about the back? And then potentially on particularly how we're um, currently like stood up, some of us might be in a little bit of excessive extension. If we came to, um, you get any position, we'll, we'll actually, we'll, we'll, we'll carry on doing it just, um, just standing. But if I come into a flexion position, so a flex spine position, some of you might um, want to do it just sat, so if I've got my chair, like say if I sat down, yeah? And if I went and rested my hands on my knees, or if anyone like is a, a does yoga, knows like child's pose, like kneeling down onto the floor. But in a rounded shape position, when I go into a flexed spine, I'm top to the pelvis underneath, I'm rounding my back. I'm resting my, uh, the front portion of my body on my thighs almost, and effectively restricting the front portion of my breathing mechanics. So where do I force myself? I have to breathe into, I have to breathe into the back. So you can take a breath in, feel the expansion into the sides, but because you've restricted the front, 
you'll feel expansion happening in to the back. What might that look like in some more um, like functional movements? If I came down, say I came down into a squat. I could be in a squat, I could hold on something if I needed to, but I can round my back and breathe into that back area. Now, squatting with a rounded back with weight on your back isn't a good thing, but for the purpose of breathing into the back as an exercise to help release some of that tension and give you the feeling and sensation of how to breathe into the back, it's a great little exercise. Like the, um, if anyone's got space, so I'm trying to create some space, I wasn't necessarily going to do this because someone else. Um, let me come down onto the floor. So like a child's pose would be, if we come down into a position like this, <laughs> rest the head on the floor. If you just get anything where it allows you to have your back rounded and you supported. And you resting on uh, your ribs, on your, on your thighs, means you can't breathe into the front because <laughs> you're restricting it. So you have to breathe into here. And it can feel really nice to expand that back area. And you'll feel your diaphragm pushing in against your thighs and that restriction, the position you're in, is then forcing you to breathe into the back. And then we can try and take all those things together and go, Luke's, there you go. Charles Pose works for that, good. Uh, and, you know, and you release some muscle tension, it is because you're, you pretend I'm a bit like that as well, where we might be doing a lot of posterior chain work, and particularly for like power athletes, who will have a lot of tension in the back. And we're never releasing that because our mechanics for our breathing is happening all the time are just sort of staying in that passive release resistance, just staying in that same shape. So taking yourself into some flexion and actually breathing into those will help to release that, will help. Um, then what we want to do, um, I'll answer some of those questions um, at the end. So I have a good question about cycling, like best when you cycle, I work with some pro cyclists and, and triathletes where breathing into the back is really important because their shape on their bike is restricting that, yeah? We'll sort of answer there, haven't we? Um, so yes, being able to breathe into the back is really important to cyclists. Okay. Um, now, what I want to do is take all that. So rather than have the hands on there, maybe just do one more. The hands on there, an awareness of, oh yeah, actually for the back. With your, if you have your hands like that, if you can put your thumb at the back. Okay, now we've done that line one. I've got my hands on the side, with my thumb feeling towards the back. Can I now expand out to the sides when I breathe in? Can I feel my stomach pushing out, the ribs moving out to the sides with the hands, but then also can I feel some movement and pressure coming from the thumb at the back? Then I'm hitting that lateral expansion in the front portion. I'm getting, no, I'm getting that widening of the rib cage. I'm feeling my hands moving out, feeling my um, diaphragm moving down and pushing into this area. And then also the thumb on the back is giving me appreciation of Okay, I'm expanding into that back area, or I can. And with a little bit of awareness, I'm able to get a bit more of that, okay? And so touch is a great way to improve your awareness of where you're breathing into. But we need to be able to then do it without touching. So relax the arms down, and then take a couple of breaths where you try to just feel all of those things. So tongue to the roof of the mouth, in that through the nose quietly, can you get expansion and can you heighten your awareness that it is three dimensional expansion? It's out to the side, you can feel the front portion, but also you can feel into the back. On the way out, try to relax. If you're struggling with that exhalation, it's like this, like we're not, we're not exercising. It doesn't need to be forceful. It doesn't need to be uh, particularly active at rest like this. Let the natural elasticity of that rib cage and the diaphragm just return and if you're if you're struggling to let that happen there's a letting go process of like feeling in control like it's we, you can't you don't need to control it we are trying to work on our inhalation mechanics but on the exhalation try to think about letting go and letting it happen now in the sports performance course when i'm working with some of the athletes when we're talking about from a sporting perspective like we need to be strong and active and good at that, those exhalations as well. That's sort of like another, uh, another whole topic. But at rest, 
we should be able to just try to think about more about letting go and let that happen. Okay, so without the hands, can we feel it? And is it helping us? Okay, and then after that, what we're looking at really is going out, okay, can you take those mechanics? Um, can, you, can you take those mechanics and can you start to practice that in different positions? So can you do it? Yes, can you do it whilst you're lying down? It might actually be easier. But can you do it whilst you're not in perfect posture? Can you do it whilst you're sort of sat down a bit, sort of like slumps chilling out at work? Or if you do play a sport, um, you know, maybe if it's in running, like what's it like to go out running when there's a load of other stuff going on, some impact on the floor, your core's having to stabilise the spine a little bit more. Um, what, what is it like to try and breathe um, with those mechanics during that, during that running action? Maybe if you do diff various different sports where you find yourself in different positions, like can you still still breathe well in some of those positions? Like the cycling is a great example, like co compromised position, but can you still breathe well? And when you're compromising that spinal flexion, then you need to breathe into the back. So get good at expanding those ribs at the back to get better posture, uh, posterior um, breathing mechanics whilst you're cycling. And then when you're not cycling, thinking about trying to restore um, some, some, some neutral breathing um, patterns to, to what it is that you do. Um, and then don't get too overly, like enjoy it, play with it, experience it, um, but don't get like overly um, infatuated uh, with it. It's, still, it's, it's gonna happen on its own. So like, don't worry that like, you, you don't worry about it, it's gonna, it's gonna happen, like you're gonna breathe. Um, the final thing I wanted us to do, just like go back into where you first um, checked in at, where you first checked in at, in that we were standing up, we put one hand here and one hand there. So just go back to that. And then as you breathe, just take a few breaths. How does it feel now? Having tried to like tee up your body to like show you how well it can breathe with some of those nice mechanics, it should be more efficient. So you might notice it can be feel a bit calmer. It can feel a bit slower. And also the expansion where it's happening and in what directions hopefully will be improved as well. And the likelihood is you see a little bit of improvement. So yeah, that feels that feels that feels better. Um, but you've got habits that you will have built up for tens of years, probably. So it's not like all of a sudden, OK, now I don't think about breathing again. I'm just going to breathe perfectly because I did this one session with Jacko. No, like doing but just doing little bits and, uh, of it, uh, improving your awareness and then just doing little bits um, throughout a day. I did great first thing in the morning just to set the tone for the day. Greatest part of warm ups before exercise. So you're actually, you know, warming up and giving some love and attention to your breathing muscles that's going to facilitate all of your exercise um, and just gear them up into a um into a way to go like okay this is how i want us to breathe when 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 i'm exercising and what's exercising going to do it's going to challenge your breathing more it's going to put a strain a load on it it's going to ask you to breathe faster and breathe bigger and if you can't do it well at rest it's going to be very difficult to do it under the stress or the load of breathing but that's where I found like running was, and it can be anything for you, but like running is nice and cyclical. It's easy. It's rhythmical. Um, you don't have to think too much about the thing that you're doing. So you can focus in on the breath. And as you're, when you're running faster, your breathing gets bigger or louder or you know, not louder audibly, but also just sort of louder in it talking to you of like, okay, I can feel it now. Like, and, and how well can you control it? And how well can you still breathe well? low down when you're being asked to do it a little bit bigger and a little bit faster if it needs to, when it goes big and you just go <gasps> big here that's not really big you never get into the bottom portions you can't fill the lungs up here <gasps> and then breathe lower down afterwards you you can you can breathe into here after you've breathed, breathed low down Does that makes sense so like breathing low down a rest but then when you need to take a bigger breath start it low down still and just let it fill up the rest as well that's going to be a more effective breath it's going to be more efficient and it's going to actually be uh, bigger 
Um, I bet you think about <laughs> running at some point during your 135 mile. It's not a race. It's a race. It's not a race. It's kind of, ultra marathons aren't races. Well, I'm not right. Um, I bet you think about running. I think I bet I think about. I wish I didn't run during that at some point. The emotions that's going to go into that is going to be fairly, um, fairly interesting. Um, Okay, so um, I just wanted to, if anyone's got any questions, bang them into the, the chat box and I'll answer those um, for these last few minutes. I just wanted to say about a couple of the things that are going on. Some of you have already joined in. Uh, the Pro Breathwork app is uh, a new app that I've brought out. Pro Breathwork is, I'm a one-man band pretty much, so Pro Breathwork is me. It's not that there's some big thing behind Pro Breathwork, but the, the website is probreathwork.com. Uh, um, there are online courses in there. There's live sessions. Some of you have signed up for these already. We do live sessions each uh, week, for, and it's just four ninety nine a month. Um, the next one, I believe, is on Thursday this week, um, and you get seven day free trial. So you can actually like sign up, and it's available on Android um, and on Apple. So you can just search Pro Breathwork. I'll follow. I'll send an email to people if they've got any questions and things, but I'll, I'll send you a link so you can just download it on on Apple or Android. Um, but there's um, a seven day free trial for the live sessions. So you can actually just come and try one of the sessions and just see how, how you like it. And then you can cancel it if you want to. I, I only want people to pay for it if they use it, enjoy it and like it. Um, but the thing is there's a foundations course on there that's completely free. And I think there's maybe like eight or nine modules um, and functional breathing is one of them. So there's some like shorter tutorials of what we've gone through today so if you don't want to watch the whole thing back in a one it's like an hour long session um the foundations course is completely free so you can download the app you can get you just sign up um you can get the foundations course for free and um yeah there's the the um the functional breathing mechanics in that is in, in short little tutorials there's all the biochemistry that i was talking about there's some awareness drills um, there's tracking on the app so you can take things like your bolt score and your respiratory rate and track those and see how your progress is um, and there's a few other nice little exercises, like breathing light exercises um, in that foundations course. Um, I don't think you will enjoy it and it's free. So I um, wanted to put something out there that helps people with the basics um, at zero cost, other than I guess you need to have a phone to be able to have an app in the first place. So um, there's a barrier. If you don't have a phone, if you don't have a phone, you're probably not on this call, are you? So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, so there's weekly sessions and there's, and there's a course, there's a sports performance course um, and a stress uh, management and anxiety course on the Breathwork app, as well as that free one. Um, and then anyone that is involved in exercise or sports performance or just wanting to improve their, uh, their running, their exercise, whatever it is that they, they do as their part of their exercise or their sports, whatever sports you play in, um, on the 19th of July, so next Tuesday, it's a two hour seminars there's quite a lot of stuff that we go through um, tickets are on eventbrite i'll send you an email um, if you haven't seen how to sign up for that um, i'll send a link to that in the email um, it's normally it's it's 19.99 but if you use code jacko um, i'll put this in the email for you um, you get a five off so it's 14.99 for anyone that's been part of either my email uh newsletter or has, has taken part in this uh this little session um so i do a lot of work with um some professional rugby teams and, and and rugby players um triathletes um and so sharing what we've learned and what we're teaching those professional sports men and women and athletes uh, and making that available to um to everyone because there's some really cool stuff that's um has a big impact on how efficiently you're able to do your sports, but also how um, how you perform, and then also how well we can recover, um, and then we cover we cover all of that in that sports performance um, seminar. So there is quite a bit of stuff in that, so it is two hours uh, long. Um, and if you can't make it live, there will be a video uh, recording and replay of that if you do sign up. Um, Show. If anyone has any questions, oh yeah, look, let me come back. Sorry. Sometimes you say if anyone has any questions, and you often don't get that many questions. Um, Matteo, uh, as for e, as, even as belly expands out, is there still some slight constriction in the belly for stabilization? Otherwise, it feels like the belly just falls forward. Um, I think that the 
the thing that um, gets, uh, what's the right word? Like misconception or confused of like, it just being about like belly movement and we lack the, we lack the uh, mid cage expansion. And then as I showed you in a little demonstration, because I, I, it's, it's happened to me where it's like, I then like focus so much on the ribs and then like didn't realize it's like, oh, I'm getting the ribs moving, but now I'm sucking my tummy in for some reason. Like, why am I doing that? And so it's not, it's not, it's not sort of automatic by like, if I just get one thing right, okay, so I get the ribs moving, is everything going to be, um, is everything going to be perfect now? And I, I don't think I believe in perfect anyway, other than I think your body, I believe that your body knows how to breathe and knows how to breathe well i think it's wired to do it right and we just need to take away some of those restrictions um the main constriction for people around the sort of like abdominal region is like holding tension in their abs for a whole host of potential reasons which could the simplest could be like just wanting to hold, keep my tummy in so I, I don't look fat or whatever like that could be as simple as that but that tension in your abdominal muscles is restricting the movement um of the ribs but it will feel a little bit different for um, everyone. And that's probably why it's difficult to answer that question in that I don't know exactly, it's, you know, I, you don't know how, what someone is feeling. Um, if you want to try and elaborate, Matteo, on that, of like what that feeling is, so I can give a, a better idea, then um, yeah, pop a bit more detail about what that sort of feeling or sensation is like. Um, Cheryl, it's been brilliant. Took her back to your HND days in sports science. Good on you. I don't, I, uh, I'm surprised that they were teaching um, never in any of my strength and conditioning training um, or courses I've done did they did they teach us how to breathe um, so we on a good course if they do that um, ah, uh, ask about the challenge yes um, the, the ring of fire is the challenge um, doing it for charities if anyone does want to um, share that or donates the petals there's the charity would be very grateful and i'd be happy with you being uh, supporting and just sharing what it is that the the message within that is about it's it's not about it's as, as you'll find out if you look at any of my stuff what i'm sharing about what it's about is, is not about it's not about running and it's it's not about the challenge it's more about like trying to connect, get people to getting myself and getting people to connect more deeply with them with themselves and some actual realities of like uh what is what is life all about for us um so there's a little bit more of, of that besides and share a little bit more about what that is about but yeah on, on the outside it's like oh you're just trying to do a run but it's uh, it's not necessarily about the run which hopefully if you're if you're interested you'll you'll hopefully find out i'll share some links to, about that as well um and you training auction as well um <laughs> I'm a master instructor, but that's just the name that Patrick calls them. I'm not a, I'm not a master at work, that's for sure. Uh, we are all working um, on this. Uh, good to come to town. Thank you, uh, Jeremy. I just want to say a big thank you. I just ran my first 42 k trail race. Yes, nice. Uh, and I did as much nasal breathing as I was aware of and felt great. Your funny videos helped me a lot too. I'm glad to know. Funny and informative. Um, the trouble with nasal breathing during something like a marathon or an ultra, and this, and this is definitely with me as well, is like when you do something, when you go out running on your own, it's dead easy in that you like, you, you got no one to talk to, but talking is mouth breathing. Look, I'm, I'm talking and I'm not dead. So I'm breathing. And when you, when you when your mouth, uh, sorry, when you're talking it's, it's mouth exhalations. Um, and so yeah, I get excited and start talking to everyone, mainly about telling them how to breathe. <laughs> so like, uh, but then it then massively affects my breathing. When I go out running with someone and I'm not nasal breathing, my heart rate jumps from like maybe like a nice steady 130 when I'm on my own to like 150 or 160 when I'm talking. And just showing, no, I'm not running any faster. It's just literally the breathing. Um, Elizabeth, glad you enjoyed this session. Um, side back, you like the side of the back breathing. Um, uh, Katie Bradbury, great session. Thanks so much for putting free content. Good luck with the challenge. Thank you. Thank you for people offering. I didn't realize the challenge was going to um, promote a uh, lots of good luck messages. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I think that the some of the stuff like yeah, as coaches, we're really teaching people to breathe. Like everyone needs to earn a living to like pay their pay their bills and stuff. But there's certain things that are like a breathing that's just a basic thing of life that 
we all need to do and there's I feel like there's a there's a bit of a, a mission or calling of like you should be teaching people the basics for free but in, that's just how I feel about it um and enjoy doing and um, let's make no bones about it I enjoy these sessions uh thank you thank you thank you anyone got any other questions are there sessions planned that target increase yes Patrick H so um in the um in the pro breathwork app the live in the live there's in the sports performance course there's a whole section on like um improving co2 tolerance with like breath holding and breathing light practices and in the live sessions that i do um we have a session each month specific on co2 tolerance breath holding and then also um the breathing efficiency session is not breath holding but it's on co2 tolerance and controlling your breath um as well so there's at least uh two in there um every month um yeah, Matteo, continue to experiment. It's, it's, I'm literally, every time I go out, I'd say like, I go out for a run, it's like, it's an experience. It's not exercise and it's a chance to connect with the breath. And I learned, and I even actually like felt like I learned something during that session when I was trying to demonstrate side on that like moving the ribs out, I can almost, it didn't feel weird to suck my belly in. And I was like, okay, well, if I didn't feel that weird to do that, and I know that's not right, like when am I potentially doing that without realizing? Um, so every time we engage with the breath, there's an opportunity, I think, to um, to learn something about it. And with exercise, it's nice because it just heightens it. <laughs> it just it's bigger, it's louder, it's there's more of it. So you're going to notice it a little bit easier. But it's then harder to control. <laughs> so it's like a bit of a double edged sword. It's it's more noticeable, but it's potentially a little bit harder. Um, oh, thank you, Jeremy. For, um, I'd like to know. Yes, I will send a link. Um, I'll send an email with the link to download the free app. Um, the, the the sports form seminar if anyone's interested in that and um details about the just giving page where you can do it there's also details about like i've tried to explain it's quite long <laughs> about what the what the challenge is about uh, and why we're doing it and um, there's a bit about what the petals charity is as well and why that's so important um alan looking forward to sharing the oceans glad you like that there's one of the uh, anastasia one of the auctionlanters master instructors he does a if you really like it for your yoga he's a yoga instructor and a master instructor of the and he does a um uh, an auction advantage uh, certification specific for yoga instructors um and i'm not a yoga instructor so i haven't done it but i do i've done some work with him and he is fantastic and i'm sure his uh, course will be fantastic um nils uh, my question is similar to Matthew, when I breathe, I kind of see a, a pooch belly in the lower abs. Yours looks much flatter. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, no, so um, it does, it feels, it, yes, so maybe I, maybe this, maybe I do know what uh, Matthew was on, but it does feel like you're sort of like letting your like, belly just hang out <laughs> in a way. Like it, it maybe doesn't, it doesn't look like the, um, the six pack ab like look that you might want to take a, a photo of when you're doing that nice inhalation but we want to be relaxed in that area and letting that area expand like um i've heard um on joe rogan's podcast when he interviewed laird hamilton he was talking about you know the, the surfer he was talking about like guys with those like great six pack abs um like have problems with the breathing because those because there's a dominant like over over developed um I did far too many setups as a kid trying to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger in my bedroom when I was like 13 to 18. Um, and those like over overdeveloped the abdominals, like um, providing more, helping it be easier for you to do more spinal flexion rather than to get air out rather than actually the ribs coming together. Um, and uh, and when we're holding tension in there, actually like stopping the ribs from moving. Um, I think some of my um dysfunctional breathing in the past has definitely come from that um oh someone shared the um jeremy's found the link and shared it is that right jeremy i think it was you that was asking for the link i think that you've then found it um thank you for sharing uh that jeremy um andrew from iceland or well oh, you said is iceland um thank you brother for joining my pleasure um okay <laughs> uh, right what's his name um the, the the yoga um right uh his name i uh, let me uh, let me two seconds i'll literally find his um instagram and i will share it uh, for you in the chat box because um, i won't pronounce his name
It's like anastasis, anastasis tenazi. Yeah, I'll share it here. Look. Um, there we go. That's in the chat box. Um, but if you go onto the Auction Advantage website, so it's auctionadvantage.com, um, Tessie Grant's Movement Coach, you'll be able to. Um, Apologies if I've just pronounced your first name wrong. Um, on the auction van, on auctionrangers.com on their website, you will see, um, you should be able to see that. Um, cool. 22 of us still on the call at nearly quarter past. Thank you for everyone to, uh, that's hanging on, hoping for there being um, maybe a drop of wisdom at the end. There isn't. Um, <laughs> keep enjoying the breath that you take. Um, you, uh, you join this world with your first one and we're all going to end with our last one. That's probably the only thing that we actually know. Um, one of the things I'm trying to encourage with the uh, with the Ring of Fire Ultra Marathon is like maybe just try and connect a little bit more with with some of those breaths and, and what are we doing in between those important ones and um, yeah hopefully spark some spark some thoughts and some conversations about how we can go deeper. So cool! Thank you everyone for joining. Until next time, unless you're doing something really high intensity, keep it nasal.